Let's discuss this and more. Dr. Sonia Aracera is with us, NHS doctor and campaigner. When I was a kid, mm. if we were talking about, you know, stereotypical jobs, then you might think a doctor, higher echelons of the wage scale, mm. educated, good university education, invariably a, a, a similar background, often also another, from a medical background as well, you often as a parent um, uh, in, a, in a similar world, um, and therefore probably a Tory. Um, Has it changed over the years? Has it changed because the constant narrative, correctly so, that, yeah. that we, we have about the NHS and funding and all that goes with yeah, it? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think you'll struggle to find someone that's, who works in the NHS that will um, be voting Tory this election. Really? Yeah, I think that's so. interesting. I am... I, um, well, the whole if you find NHS. someone, let me know. I think you will struggle just because, you know, the working conditions have got so bad now in the NHS that, you know, you see it everywhere, whatever, whatever part of the NHS been, you work in. They've always in. been that, though, hasn't well, there? I can remember yeah, BBC3 doing a documentary on junior doctors and things like that. As in, like, working conditions are hard, but as in, I don't, I don't have a problem with working conditions being hard, but you do have a problem when you are working flat out and you can see that the care that your, your patient is getting is bad. Yeah. So, you know, I... I, I have a problem when I start my shift and I walk down the corridor and I see people lying in trolleys on the corridor, elderly people, and I know that they could be lying there for hours. True. But and you have a &E's, you know, on the back. So it's... it's but do, yeah, but don't we all have this kind of, you know, real, intra, you can fall through the cracks on any big system, of course. And yeah. It's terrible when it happens to a, an individual or a family. But is there... Is, is there a danger that we're now kind of only viewing the NHS through this rather negative prism? I mean, I, I, again, stories of people on trolleys. I mean, how do you, how, how is that ever addressed? You know, if an AD department suddenly has a flurry of 2,000 mm. people turn up when they're expecting 800 over mm. the course of a particular period of time, mm. then that's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, but the problem is, what would happen is there used to be sort of, there'd be certain times when it would get very busy, but now it, it's constantly like that. Mm. Um, and, all the, you know, the problem is actually with, with most hospitals now, you've got patients in hospital who just can't get discharged because there's no social care in the community for them to go. So it's, we have people in hospital that don't need to be there. Um, and then also I see, and this, I think, for, I find this really heartbreaking, I have a lot of elderly patients coming into hospital mm. that really shouldn't be coming into hospital, sure. but because they're just not being cared for properly, they're not getting social care. So I had yeah. like an old man coming in, he came in really, really sick, um, and it's because he'd fallen over at home, and then he'd been left on the floor for days. Yeah. So you see, those type of stories, I think, really get you as a medical professional, sure. and you see that and you think, God, this shouldn't be happening. Like, this is we're in that sort of strange world at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, and I think and I think you're right to say a lot of these things is complicated and there's lots of causes mm. to these issues. Um, but I do think I do think we shouldn't be just accepting that that's inevitable. True. Um, and I and I think that's you know, I think I think there's a lot of people, myself included, who are getting involved in politics because I think we think there must be a solution to this and we're looking for our politicians to come up with a solution. Like we can't continue to get to allow this to, yeah. to just get worse and worse and worse. Another thing, this sort of it was a story that was released last week, um, which didn't get much traction, but it showed that in the past few years, the number of children getting admitted to hospital with pneumonia or chest problems um, and, and who are needing hospital treatment has risen you know, a, a considerable amount in the past few years. Again, the, the authors of this research said it was down to more kids living in poverty, more kids living in bad housing conditions, more kids you know, malnutrition, not getting fed mm. properly. All these things, that's not inevitable. That increase is not yeah, inevitable. Yeah. You know, and we need we need some ideas from our politicians. I mean, we need our politicians to say, actually, that's not okay. We're going to do sure. something about it, um, and try have have at least the intention to address the, these problems and come up with solutions. But, but when we talk about social care, what does that um, encompass? What because it's a wide area. Isn't yeah, it? and it's complicated. I think also a lot of I I find this in my work that a lot of people don't realise. Um, that they, they, they assume because you have the NHS and that's free and that you have this, you know, the brilliant care that you get, they also assume that social care will be there for them free as well. Mm. Um, and it isn't. So, um, and it's quite complicated, the system. People don't know how to, um, how to navigate it. They don't know where they're going to get their social care from. Um, it's not always about elderly people, is it? It could be no, about also, people yeah, other for sort of social needs. Social or... needs, physical needs. Um, you know, you'll have a lot of young, you know, young people may need it as well. But anyone with disabilities could need social care. Um, but it's it's had it's been severely funding cuts to social care have been really severe in the past few years. We have one at least one point four million elderly people who need social care sure. but are not getting it. So that means sort of basic things, you know, not getting cleaned, not getting fed properly. And I just I actually think it's like a national scandal that we've still not got on top of this. Sure, and sure. not just 
this government, I think past Whatever, governments as well. We should never be in a place where people are presenting yeah. themselves anywhere in, yeah. the, in that situation. Yeah, so we should be ca you know, caring for right. our elderly in our society. Apparently, apparently they're, they're pledging over a billion a year for the next five years, just being told. Okay, so that's not going to be enough and it's not a solution. Okay. We need, you know, I think, so th I think I was... <laughs> I but isn't Auburn... that a, like with respect, on it? Isn't that like a very labour-y answer? It's like, well, it's not enough, not a solution. Well, it's a, a billion quid, isn't it? Yeah, but I think from, from the scale of the problem, 1.4 million elderly people, that's not enough. It's a billion um, every year. I, I, it's, it's not a solution to the problem. So at the moment, we, we, we actually need to have a clear social care policy. Um, and, and they're basically saying we're going to decide the policy in the future. Okay. So we need to, we need to actually, we need a, a decision to be made of how we're going to provide social care in this country. Are we going to have, are we going to continue down the line where some people, some get it, some people don't get it, it's means tested. Do we sure. want to have everyone's entitled to it if they need it? Do we want to, uh, want the rich pay, poor don't? We need to have a decision on that. And you can't just keep pushing that decision down the line. Here just you know, last week, last Sunday, and we know how cold it was last weekend. Yep. Um, there were four boats that were, were, that were intercepted, 39 migrants um, on them. So we, that's the ones that were caught. So we don't know how many more boats there were. We don't know how many sure. died on Sunday. So it's, it's, it, we will never know the true number, the true cost of this. Um, but you know, the way I see it, they're, they're, migration is going to happen. People move. Um, and we can we can try and try and do our best to provide safe and legal routes for people to make that move, or we can put up walls um, and push people into these very into trafficking into these very risky situations, and lives will be lost, just like this one.